Hi, this is Annie Ajibor Rico from Street Scores, and the Washington Commanders have claimed defensive tackle John Ridgeway off waivers from the Cowboys. Multiple teams tried to get him. We won the waivers because we have a higher waiver priority. Is this our replacement for Fedarian Mathis until he gets back healthy next season? Also, Chase Roulier, our starting center. Ron Rivera said that it's probably going to be a temporary IR, but some other people believe that it may be a season-ending injury with the surgery that he has to get to repair it. So we're going to dive into all of that and more. But before we do, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get notification immediately. And every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, make sure you pull up every Friday for the broadcast podcast show where we talk about everything funny going on, sports, music, gaming, anime, whatever. Also, make sure you pull up every Sunday for the During the Game live streams where I break down everything that's going on live during the games when we play. And then also make sure you pull up for the post game live stream tonight, Monday. I'm probably going to have them on Mondays for now on. But without further ado, let's get it. All right, so let's start with some slightly positive news. We don't exactly know how positive yet, but again, the Washington Commanders have claimed former Cowboys defensive tackle John Ridgeway, the former fifth round pick, gives Washington some defensive line depth. That's what Ian Rappaport tweeted out. And again, like I said in the intro, multiple teams entered a claim on Ridgeway. We want it because we have a higher priority, which is like a good thing in this situation, but you have a higher priority because you lose more game. What's really interesting about him is that that he was a fifth round pick in this past draft like the 2022 draft so it's really weird i'm about to go look at some more tape on him to go see like what he did wrong in training camp what he's done so wrong in preseason and within these first two games to where the cowboys felt like they didn't have a use for him it's really weird for a fifth round pick of this draft to be cut by now hasn't even played an entire three games yet fifth round pick not a seventh a fifth i mean granted it's not a third or higher of course obviously but still cutting a fifth round pick this soon is a little strange so it makes me a little skeptical like is he not as good as a lot of people thought coming out of the draft because that takes me to my next point a lot of people felt like john ridgeway was just as good as Fedarian mathis coming out of the draft if not better i mean dp brugler had ridgeway coming out of arkansas as his seventh defensive tackle in the draft and had Fedarian mathis out of alabama as his sixth that's not far off and we took Fedarian mathis in the second round and it's showing. I mean, that, let's go ahead and get into that right now. That Lions game was literally the Fedarian Mathis game. Love Jonathan Allen, love Deron Payne, but they're not the best double team eaters. They're better one-on-one -on -one and making plays out of that. Fedarian Mathis was supposed to be your anchor, your guy that eats up double teams, split double teams, and disrupt running lanes. We are one of the worst run defense defenses in the NFL right now, and Fedarian Mathis not being here is probably the majority of the reason. Of course, there's some run fit issues from the linebackers and the DBs and things like that, people out of place, people not making the right decision, not holding their gap responsibilities, probably some Jack DeRio issues there as well. But for the most part, I think if we have Fedarian Mathis against the Lions, that game is completely different. I'm not sure if it makes a difference in points, but it definitely makes a big difference in yards, and maybe it's a completely different game. Maybe it's a domino effect. I mean, you can literally tell that the Lions were like, oh, Fedarian Mathis is out? Oh, bet. We don't even have to worry about that no more. We're going to run it right up the A-gap with Jamal Williams and DeAndre Swift. They were able to get whatever they wanted on the outside and whatever they wanted in the inside, and they pretty much was just like, we're going to be stronger, tougher, and more physical than y'all. And just literally ran it right up through the teeth of the defense. I mean, right up the middle a lot of the times. I mean, when you see DeAndre Swift, you see Jamal Williams, you think, okay, they're going to try to get guys outside, use their speed and quickness. But without Fedarian Mathis, the Detroit Lions was like, why do all of that complicated stuff? We'll just keep it simple and run it right up the gut. And that's where Fedarian Mathis comes in. So losing him was huge, bigger than what people probably think. He's not the greatest pass rusher yet. Maybe he never will be. But that unselfish eat up double teams and let everybody else e play style that he has was supposed to be huge for this defense it's one of the reasons i was very high on this defense coming out of the offseason into the regular season because that's exactly what montez sweat jonathan allen deron Payne, and when chase young returns that's what they need a guy that's unselfish love tim settle love matt ionitis but they're also one-on-one -on -one beaters 
we needed an anchor that can hold it down, basically be the nose tackle whenever we run a run, five defensive linemen. For Darian Mathis not being here hurts us in a lot of ways, and it's kind of a domino effect because without him, now our linebackers have more on their plate as far as stopping the run, and then with them struggling to stop the run, that means the DBs also need to contribute, but then they also need to worry about being out in coverage as well. So for Darian Mathis not being here hurts us, but hopefully, hopefully, John Ridgeway is able to step up and be with Fedarian Mathis was supposed to be for us at least somewhat I don't expect him to be as good as Fedarian Mathis again some people come out of the draft thought he was actually better than Fedarian Mathis but at the very least and like I explained when Fedarian Mathis went to IR and I did a whole video breaking that down it's not even just the talent it's literally the specific role we don't have anybody else on this defensive line that can do what Fedarian Mathis was doing which again is eating up double teams it's not like we need to bring in another veteran defensive tackle that's another one-on-one -on -one beater even a guy that you may consider slightly better than Fedarian Mathis right now that may be a veteran that's a better one-on-one -on -one beater than Fedarian Mathis that's not what we're looking for we're looking for a specialized skill set of a guy that can beat double teams so hopefully John Ridgeway is the answer because that's the anchor that's going to allow everybody else on the defensive line to do their jobs even better and just an update on his past first of all he's 23 years old he transferred to Arkansas after four years at Illinois State where he was twice named to the all-conference team again the Cowboys used the fifth round pick on him he signed a four-year rookie deal worth a little less than four million but for some reason the Dallas Cowboys chose to wave him on Sunday after the game in his senior year in 2021 he recorded 39 tackles four tackles for loss and two sacks so this is a guy that's not coming here with a lot of penetration and pass rushing skill set to his name but hopefully he can be that double team meter that Fedarian Mathis was supposed to be for us and comparing the sizes Fedarian Mathis is six foot four 313 pounds double team meter Ridgeway is even bigger, six foot five, an inch taller, and 332 pounds, almost 20 pounds heavier. So that's literally what he's being brought here to do. Just be a black hole in the middle of the defense for the offensive line. Now, we're going to need him against these Eagles. I'm thinking that even though we just brought him in, he's a fifth round rookie that just got waived after only two games in his NFL career I'm thinking he's gonna play quite a bit against the Eagles because we're going against another true run heavy attack with Jalen Hurts and all of the running backs led by Miles Sanders and even AJ Brown out of the backfield Devonta Smith out of the backfield we need to be ready to stop the run I feel like the Lions were a really good run team and the Eagles may be even better so even though we're just now picking up John Ridgeway like right now he may not even completely know the defense by the time we play the Eagles this upcoming weekend I'm thinking we just signed John Ridgeway and he's gonna be active against these Eagles and again gonna probably play quite a bit because we really need again it's not like we need the best defensive tackle in the world we need a specific skill set and that's a guy that's gonna allow everybody else to do their jobs even better and hopefully he can do that man I'm really really hoping he can do that from what I've seen so far just from the little bit that I've watched him I think he can and again just based on his size his weaknesses and strengths I don't think he'll be Fedarian Mathis but I think he'll be able to do what Fedarian Mathis can do and he'll be able to do it better than everybody else we currently have especially with Casey Tuhill now he's hurt so that's another hit to our defensive line even though he wasn't what Fedarian Mathis was doing anyway still we're losing defensive line depth right now hopefully John Ridgeway can step up big man and now for Chase Rudier the slightly bad news well as of right now According to Ron Rivera and as reported by John Com, we know he's at the very least going to be on the short term IR. So he's going to have to miss a minimal of four games. We already know that. But Jeremy Fowler just tweeted, Washington starting center Chase Roulier is in danger of missing the rest of the season due to the significance of knee injury. Surgery considered a viable option, but second option coming. As John Com noted, short term IR at minimum. So John Com reported that Roulier is getting a second opinion on his right knee, but the fear is that he may need season ending surgery. And just to let you know, if you want to go find it on the game, if you have the replay, he was hurt with one minute and eight seconds remaining in Sunday's 36 to 27 loss. So we were already losing, the game was already out of reach, and then we possibly lost our starting center for the rest of the season. That's not good. We really need him. He's one of our more consistent offensive linemen, but he has been banged up quite a bit since we drafted him and re-signed him. Love him at center, but we need him to stay healthy. And it's really ugly because technically a second string center is on the pup list right now we don't have him till week five at the soonest same time as chase young at the soonest and brian robinson and then also wes schweitzer was inactive he was hurt during that lions game so he wasn't able to play and step in so as of right now you're 
first second and third string centers are out right now i mean hopefully if west schweitzer is healthy enough to play against the eagles but i'm not sure if they're gonna rush it and even chance it for him to risk getting hurt even worse and losing him for the entire season so he may miss a couple of games so now potentially our starting center is west martin so i'm assuming we're gonna go try to find somebody in free agency because there's no way it's west martin i doubt it's chris paul sadiq charles took a couple of snaps at center throughout the off season during training camp and things like that but i doubt it's him as well we're gonna have to bring somebody in from somewhere because as of right now it's really ugly even if west schweitzer is healthy that would just leave him as our only real center on roster outside of west martin so even if he were to say start against the eagles what happens if he gets hurt now, Wes Martin is just starting center for the remainder of the game and until further notice, not knowing how many games up until the point that maybe Tyler Larson is healthy enough to come back week five. We'll see. I mean, it's just chaotic on the offensive line right now. We already have Andrew Norwell and Trey Turner dealing with injuries. Even though they played against the Lions, they didn't play very well. And I'm assuming injuries has something to deal with that because I refuse to believe our offensive line was that bad and it's not due to injuries because I felt like they looked pretty good against the Jaguars. And I thought the Jaguars defensive line at the very least was more talented. But the Lions defensive line looked like they were better coached. They looked more consistent. They looked like they had a better game plan against our offensive line. They blitzed quite a bit. And our offensive line was just not ready. And I just refused to believe that it was only X's and O's. There had to be some injuries into that. I, I just refused to believe it was anything else. So, man, our offensive line is struggling right now. I thought they looked really good against the Jaguars. But after the Lions game, I'm not hitting the panic button. And hopefully that was a big wake-up call. But it's ugly. Again, only getting worse with Chase Roulier getting hurt and possibly losing them for the rest of the season. At the very least, going to lose them for the next four games and there's options out there but none too great i mean you have jc treader you have matt paradis nick martin josh andrews bj finney you have our keith ishmael dangling out there that didn't even make our practice squad speaking of practice squad i mean we technically have john toth on there but that's worst case scenario i prefer to try just some random veteran out there because i've already seen enough from john toth getting beat by the ravens fourth stringers like he was going against aaron donald so there's just no i don't even know why he's on the practice squad and then maybe guard nolan loffenberg also on the practice squad i don't know Maybe we try Chris Paul, who wasn't even active against the Lions, but he is on the 53-man roster. We'll see. There's options out there, but none are too obvious or great. We're just going to have to try to mix some things up, try some things out, and hopefully it works. As of right now, our run game is abysmal. We have one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. We also have one of the worst running offenses in the NFL, and losing Chase really doesn't help that at all. But we're going to have to figure something out, man, and something soon, because this Eagles game is no joke. And even the Cowboys without Dak Prescott, even trying to sell the game to the Eagles, they still found a way to win. So they're no joke even without Dak Prescott, and we need to be ready for that game as well. And then the Bears, week five, look better than what we expected. I mean, they look like they're coming out to play, especially in that week one game. And speaking of the Bears game, week five, I mean, technically, that's the first game that we could potentially get Chase Young. Tyler Larson, technically our second string center, and Brian Robinson back. But will they all be back that game? I don't know for sure. So, man, we got to be ready. It's an ugly next coming three weeks, man, because I believe that Bears game is also a Thursday night. So that kind of sucks that week five, the first game that we're eligible to get all of those guys that are coming off of injuries back is a short week. So we may just hold guys off until the game after that just to give them an extra long week to prepare for the return to the 2022 season and in Brian Robinson's case, his debut. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please leave a like on this video if you liked it. If you learned anything, definitely get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this whole Fedarian Mathis situation. And are you excited about the fact that we signed John Ridgeway? Me personally, I prefer to go with a younger guy with a lot of potential over just some random agent veteran i mean they clearly want to keep going youth every time there's been an injury we've signed a younger guy to replace them even in the cornerback group so i think this goes along with what our plan is but at this point with as bad as we got demolished against the lions is our plan working Either way, I'm happy about signing John Ridgeway, but what I'm not happy about is losing Chase Roulier and who we have to potentially replace him until he comes back healthy. That's if he even returns this season. But yeah, man, definitely get in the comment section. Let me know y'all feelings about all of that. A shout out to all of my supporters, man. Shout out to all of my sponsors, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors. Name you see scrolling on the screen right now. Leave a like on this video again if you haven't. Catch y'all later. I'm out.